on my front porch you can see the sea. I got some. Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to this week's Stay Fishy Adventure. Today, you saw it right in the thumbnail, we're in the mini raft. We call this the SS Vendo and it is a mighty watercraft, big enough for one, especially one my size. And today, we are going for the infamous cutthroat trout. If you guys missed the last couple of Addicted Lives, we did some of this cutthroat trout fishing uh, in a very special method, a very fun method that I've been really wanting to do. But today, we're on the coast, we have a big, big plan in store and we're floating the river in the tiniest raft of all. Stick around, it's gonna be an awesome adventure. Let's go do it. Okay, so the main goal today is to catch fish on the old sculpin jig. This river that we're in has a, a bountiful amount of really, really cool cutthroat trout. And these are sea run cutthroat trout. So these things are almost like a salmon and steelhead. They're anonymous. They migrate to and from the ocean and they come up in these rivers this time of year, one to spawn, two to eat the little babies and the eggs uh, from the salmon and steelhead that spawn in these rivers that we're in. So. That's why we're using a carnivorous bait. These things are gonna chase this down and nail it, I'm hoping. I got a really good report from a friend that this was an awesome place to do this. I've never fished here before. So let's get a line wet, see if we can get one on the jig. Okay, this looks fishy. This looks fishy. Put one over here, think. Here it goes. Hole number one. Here it goes. Okay, so as you guys can see, the river is super low here. What I think I'm gonna have to do, we're only doing a really short float today, uh, mainly just to keep it safe. I didn't wanna overdo this, especially in this little boat. Um, the SS Bendo is quite the little craft. It's a little one-man raft, just enough to get the job done. Really high quality rubber so I can go over the rocks, not worry about popping the thing open. What I think is gonna end up happening here today is we're gonna have to find places in the river that are nice and deep. Like we have here, this is a really good spot, considering. Nice and deep, it's got some nice structure in there, some nice hidey spots for these for these fish. But what I'm thinking is that we're gonna have to find spots that you can't see the bottom. Somewhere that these fish aren't really susceptible to predators like, like eagles and hawks and osprey that are gonna be trying to eat them. Um, so probably fast water riffles and probably a little bit deeper spots is what we're gonna be looking for. So without further ado, let's keep moving. Hole number one, no fish. Let's go find hole number two. You know, this reminds me of an old saying, it goes, white water in the morning, and that's it. Back to fishing. Uh, probably the nicest hole yet. An old saying, nice it goes, deep. white water Still in the morning. Water. Big ledge in here for the fish to hide behind. I'm feeling good about this one. Big ledge in here for the fish. Oh, there's a second. Oh, man, he nailed it. Oh, got him, got him. First fish of the day. Just a little guy, but it's a fish. What do we have here? Looks like it might actually be a cutthroat. Yep, totally is a cutthroat. 
beautiful little guy, first one of the day. You can see that red gill under the bottom there. Beautiful, beautiful spots and coloration. See you later. All right. Beautiful, beautiful first spots. First cutting of the day on the spinner. We got bit on the jig, switched to the spinner. Now we gotta find a bigger one. That is probably the smallest that we'll see them today. Hopefully we'll start getting into some of the bigger ones, but these things can get up to like 24 inches long. So I'm excited to see what we find. First nicest hole, first fish. Feeling good about it. Getting into some of the bigger ones, but these things. Getting into some of the bigger ones, but these things. Oh, there we go. There we go. Another little guy. Another little guy. Having a hard time finding these bigger fish so far, but the thing is, some of the bigger ones. But these things cutthroat. Another beautiful them today. dude. Hopefully we'll start. Cute. Finding these bigger Cute fish so far, I must say. That's what I've done. Kind of straight away from the jig as we've gotten into the shallower runs. Another beautiful little started today. Moving over to the rooster tail, use something a little bit smaller, a little bit different color. And I'm just working my way down. I'm kind of fishing every little possible pocket that I can find. Haven't found these big fish yet, but what I think is going to happen, we're going to cross the threshold. We're going to start getting into the holes that these big fish are going to be living. We're going to kind of hit that section of river where these things are all at. So fingers crossed, two or three fish under the belt now. Feeling good about it. The day's a success already. But let's find a big one. How about that? There we go. There we go. Oh, I lost him. That was a little bit better one. Definitely getting into the numbers of fish starting to see more and more as I'm going down the river here. I expect once we find a couple of the bigger bigger holes further down river here, we might start getting into those bigger fish. Okay, I got a whole swarm of them right here in front of me. Found this little crack in the rocks here. You guys can see just this little vein. I made one cast in there. I saw like five or six of them. Really, really nice ones start chasing it. So let's see. Oh, oh. oh they are just vicious on it, but they're not taking it. What's going on here? Oh, went after it again. Son of a gun, come on. This is it, this is it. This is our first chance at a big one here. Okay, I'm gonna go to the spinner. I'm gonna go to the spinner here. This should work, first cast, here we go. Ooh, that's a nice one. There's one chasing it right here in front of me. Got him, got him, yeah, yes. Oh, it came off. Dang it, that was a good one. It's right here it's behind me. a nice me. one, there's one chasing scooting it. Around, right. Scooting around, Oh, he's right on my feet, right at my feet. Oh, that was cool. Totally saw the whole thing go down, that was awesome. Nicer fish too, we're starting to get into the nice ones, everyone. Oh, got a nice one falling. Oh, ran out of room. Oh, got him. Oh, son of a gun. That was a really nice one. Oh, that was a really nice one. Best fish so far. Dang it. That was a really good one, everyone. Really good fish. That was a nice one. Probably a 12 incher. I'm gonna sneak down here. See if I can get a different angle on him. Definitely started getting into the fish now. Okay, right over the log. Straight down river. Oh, that was a good fish. Dang it. Some nice fish in here, everybody. We kind of found the little honey patch here. Okay, lost the first couple big fish of the day. Oh, there was one again. I think I kind of found them, everybody. What's happened here is you see we've got into this like veiny, kind of ledgy little area here. And I think what's happening, what we're seeing, is these are all really, really great feeding lanes for these fish. They can hide in between all these rocks. Oh, there's one, I can see them. Can almost visibly see every one in here now. I'm gonna switch back to the spinner. What's happening here is there's all these little feeding lanes. You have these little areas that these fish are living in. They can sit in there protected protected from the sun, protected from the, again, the predators, and they have all this food getting filtered through these little cracks. They don't even have to work to find their food. So I got a good feeling. Okay, let's slide down river. See if we can't find some more freshies. 
kind of stung every one of those in the lip. Dang it. That's all right. My theory was correct. As we're heading down the river, we're starting to find more and more habitat for them. We're starting to find more fish. And they're getting bigger. Another little guy. Another little guy. See you later. Okay. We're on them, everybody. We are on them. Oh, got him. That's a good one. That's the one we've been looking for. That's a good fish. We got him. Got him, everybody. Ah, oh, dang it. He came off. Ah, dang it. Second nice fish of the day. Almost a little bit bigger, probably around 10 inches long. Got him on the fly. Moving through all these shallow little shelves again. I'm really liking this area, so let's keep it in the water. Let's find another one. Okay, sounds like our first little bit of real white water here. I'm gonna go into it cautiously. Looks like it dumps off down around the corner. And it drops off and goes really fast into that corner. I might try to bank it here on the left in just a second. Get as far down it as I can. And then walk this little bad boy around. This is exciting. This is exciting. White water! Oh, that's fishy as F. Hold up, hold the phone. Hold the phone. I need to get over here. Get your cast back up in there. All right, here we go. All right, all right, we're making our way. All right, good. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna stand up. Get up and over here. All right. Yeah, I got a real good feeling about this spot. Probably the best best water we've found so far. Let's get it wet. Oh! There he is. Got him. Got him. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh. Second best. Second best of the day. Beautiful colors. Beautiful colors. That's the cutthroat we wanted, everybody. Oh. There he is. Look at how pretty he is in the oak. Well, it was pretty. It's all right, I have a feeling we're gonna get another one here. Having a hard time holding on to him and holding on to him on the hook. But that's okay, we are catching the crap out of him right now and I am digging it hard. Let's see your comments below on what you think of today so far. I'm loving this little mini raft challenge. I love trout fishing, everyone. There we go. That's what we came for right there. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, baby. That's the one. Stay on. Stay on. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's the fish. That's the fish we came for. Oh, what a jump. Oh, that's the one, everyone. Oh, yes. 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 Come on, baby. Come to Papa. That's the fish we're looking for right there. That is what all this work is for. Come on. Coming to Papa, yes, we got him. We got him in hand. Look at him. <laughs> yes. Look at how gorgeous that fish is. Woo. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. I knew this tactic would work. We're just kind of slowly moving along, getting our cast in, hitting our spots, and we did it. We got the fish we came for. Look at him. Wow, okay. Let's get this beautiful guy back. Always best when you're fishing for wild trout like this. Have a pair of pliers on you. Make sure that you can release these things safely. One last look at him. What a trout. Okay, buddy. I'll see you later. Yes! That is what we came for, everybody. That was a beautiful cutthroat. One of my biggest in this area, that's for sure. First time on this river. Still got a few holes left too. Let's keep fishing. Yes!
very next cast got one. Could have been eaten by the one we just got. God, I'm jazzed on that right now, everybody. The little rooster tail came through. Oh, there's another one. We are in the zone. We are in the zone. I think getting below that big waterfall really did a lot for these fish. I think they're probably really kind of set up in these lower areas. They probably didn't want to work so hard to get up over those falls. Look how red the gills on that one are. How beautiful. I think they're probably really kind of- I just saw a monster jump on the far side here. Got a good feeling about this. We're going to the jig now. It's the one thing we have- I think they're probably really kind of- today. Again, my very favorite thing to fish, so. I think they're probably really kind of- There he is, got him. Oh! <laughs> what a slammer ram -a ding dong Oh, lost him though. Dang it. I'm sure there's more though. Got a real good feeling that there's more. Boy, he freaking zwinked it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Biggest rapid of the day. I'm liking it. White water. Ayu, ayu, cowbunga. good on a warm day I see you I see you I hear you I'm sorry I left you hi I'm back I'm back buddy yeah she's out hi buddy he's so mad at me he's so mad at me hi kids hi kids yeah she's out hi success all right what a fun fishing adventure that was and i'm finally glad we got some cutthroat trout on video guys i love my little mini wrap let's see what you think of those comments below of, of what this little adventure had in store this morning but it's not over yet today we're not camping we're actually at my friend's really freaking cool beach house look at this thing we got the giant boat you will see in other videos soon to come we got other boats it's got a lot of things that float much like myself but look at this view right on the water but the even better view that you're about to see and the stay fishy munch of the week brought to you by neat tarts bay here in oregon and here it is one of my very favorite things in the world oysters that's right everybody we're having us an oyster feed so we're gonna do a little demonstration here a little how-to if you will on how to shuck an oyster it's a delicate operation actually can be very dangerous so oyster shells have a bacteria on them that if you do cut through poke into your hand and get that bacteria that's on the oyster shell, it can really get badly infected and it hurts really, really bad. It'll make your whole hand swell up. So if you don't already get these things shucked when you first get them, and you're gonna do this yourself like you're watching us do now, and you're not gonna actually cook them over fire or steam them over the stove, it's very important. Get your Michael Jackson glove. But here we go. First one, I'm eating raw. So what we do here is a technique. See the little, we call it the old clam butt. Got the clam butt here, we got this little bit of a area that we can stick that, that shucker into, and this is our shucker. It's kind of a blunt knife, basically. It doesn't have any sharpness to it. But I'm gonna take that thing, hold it right in my palm, kind of work it back and forth, right in the crevice of the edge of that shell. Just like that, see it opening up. Beautiful. Slide that knife right about the top. Oh, wow. That's a good looking oyster. Got that beautiful fresh sea water in it. Nice and cold from the ice. God. Recipe number one, raw by itself on recipe number two. Okay, there it is. Beautiful, beautiful presentation. Like a sunset of deliciousness. Now let's take these upstairs. I got two other ways we're gonna eat these raw. Little additives to them, a little bit of flavor, if you will. A little bit of wang, a little bit of zang. And then we're gonna cook some too. So let's get up there and eat them.
Very jazzy. Very snazzy. Yeah, look, we're eating oysters and jazz. Here we go. Great. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 Ew. Grubbage. Okay, let's try them. Give me a squirt on that right there. This here? Whatever one. Yep, that's fine. Perfect. Oh, a little okay, bit. let's try them. Let's squirt on that sauce. right there. A little yeah, squeeze. Whatever one. Yep, that's fine. Oh, fine. Perfect. Okay, let's try them. Mmm. Now, hot sauce is a great touch. That's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, recipe number two. A little bit of Tabasco, a little bit of hot sauce, cocktail, lime, right up there with perfectly raw. Now, go for the third try. Okay, third try. It's gonna be a little tapatio, a little bit of garlic butter. Garlic. A little garlic. And that's it. A little spice, a little nice. That one might win. The garlic on that is perfect. Fire up the grill, try a couple other ways. put these things in the oven for about 15 minutes at 400 degrees and these things will open back up so we're gonna take our shucker now take that top shell off and add the ingredients that I think makes really the best flavor contrast with these amazing little creatures that we call oysters let's get it going are shucked. We drained all the excess water out of them. Now it's time to add our ingredients. We're going to garlic, basil pesto. Nice little hefty scoop in each one. You really can't hurt it. The more the merrier here. And I love how simple this is too. Two little dishes. You can either make a homemade pesto or you can just buy one of these from the stores. What I like to do most commonly or even the ones that come in a little squirt tube can be really convenient for this especially if you're camping but luckily on this episode we're not camping. Then we're gonna take our shredded Parmesan cheese and I like to use the shredded because it melts and gets in the kind of a nice little crisp here. So we're gonna stick our oven on broil after this and just cook these from the top. Because the oyster's already done basically. It's been steamed inside that shell. We've taken those top shells off and now we're gonna broil it to crisp up that cheese, melt it all down and let that pesto start soaking into the oysters. <laughs> this looks good. Can't do too much cheese, that's for sure. Cha! See how that oil and that butter and everything that's in the pesto kind of soaked in there. Got a nice crispy layer of Parmesan. I'm not going to be an idiot and eat one of these right now. I'm going to wait just a few minutes, but it's going to be really hard to do. <sighs> Patience, everyone. Patience. All right, I'm going to take this one here because it's the prettiest, naturally. Let's go. We get all that juicy goodness. We can do this. Wow. Still very hot, but the flavor is amazing. It's like an oyster pizza almost. Explosion in your mouth. Wow. I'm drooling. Mm. I 
Absolutely love them raw. I love them every way, honestly. Well, we got these ones, guys, from J. Andy Oyster Company out of Tillamook, Oregon. And I have to say, he's a good friend of mine, and they are some of the best oysters in the world. The unique thing about this oyster bed is that it has the least amount of fresh water going into it of any lagoon on the Pacific coast. Uh, and so it just gives these things such a fresh and salty flavor, exactly what I'm looking for when I'm going to eat a oyster. And this is one of the best ways to do it. If you're not just gonna enjoy them raw, try this recipe at home. Or if you just have oysters at the store near you, go out and get a couple and try this, you will not regret it. Some big announcements here on Stay Fish, you guys. We've changed the drop day of each of these new episodes to Thursday evenings at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So be on the lookout for these videos coming out every Thursday. We're not doing Wednesday anymore because Marlon's really bad at doing that. Way to go, Marlon. But with all that being said, today was an amazing adventure. We caught a ton of fish, saw some beautiful country, and enjoyed a good meal with good people, and had a good time with our friends. So until next time, everybody, same time, same place, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.